I've seen this question after I have to do it for you. Five resonance structures for the cyclopentadienyl anion. This is a ring of five carbons with two double bonds amongst it. The anion is for an extra electron that is attached to it. Ring of five carbons, and one of those carbons has an extra electron on it. That extra electron gives you a lone pair on one of the carbon atoms. It's a formal charge of minus one on that carbon. In fact, I'll even draw a little minus one there as the formal charge. But we also need the dienyl portion of this. It's two double bonds just like that. Okay, this is one valid resonance structure for it, but how can we generate some more? The answer is we can move these electrons around, push electrons around so that we get a different distribution of electrons in the molecule. If that pair of electrons pushed itself into this bond, that would force the electrons that are already in a bond with that carbon there to come out of the bond and perhaps attach to the next carbon in the chain. That would end up giving you the same ring of five carbons. And this double bond hasn't been touched, but this lone pair has now moved into the molecule here, and you now have a lone pair on that atom there. You might already see how this is going to go. We now have a minus one charge on this carbon. What happens if we push it further? Let's force our way into here. That's going to force this double bond to break and perhaps those electrons sit on the next carbon. That gives you the same pentagon of carbons. This double bond didn't get touched but we formed a double bond here at the bottom and we're putting our lone pair of electrons on this carbon atom. Now that one has a minus one charge. Continue twice more. Push your way into this bond, force the electrons from the current double bond onto the next carbon. That's a pentagon, untouched double bond, gets drawn, new double bond gets drawn, lone pair gets put on a carbon. I'm going to put a formal charge here. And lastly, push that pair of electrons into the next bond, break the double bond that was connected to that carbon. You end up with one more pentagon. Bam, 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 bam. Didn't touch that one formed a new double bond there, lone pair there. I'm finally going to write that formal charge in there. Now officially, the way that you're supposed to draw Lewis structures for each of these, now I guess this isn't a Lewis structure, so perhaps you don't have to do this, but some teachers are going to want you to put it in square brackets with a minus one charge to show that it is a minus one ion in each case. I, I guess I imagine there are teachers who would let you just put the whole thing in a single set of square brackets, but uh, I don't know, find out from your teacher what they want to see. And you need these resonance arrows, uh, double-headed, but there's a single bar between them. It's not an equilibrium arrow, it's not a reaction arrow. A double-headed single line arrow is a resonance arrow, and it shows that all of these are interchangeable with each other. <coughs> the resonance hybrid here actually has these two, uh, these two pi bonds worth, these four electrons that are those two double bonds, delocalized around the entire ring. And the fact that you can push that electron pair around to become this one. You can imagine those electrons circulating in a circle like you would for benzene, but that is not exactly how delocalization works. The idea is that you have these two pi bonds spread evenly-ish among the five carbon-carbon bonds in the molecule.
I'm splitting hairs here. Here's your five resonance structures. I gave you what you came for. Thanks for being here, and best of luck.